Okay, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to use GitHub for Windows integrated with Visual Studio. So it turns out that this is a lot easier than I thought. There's a bunch of ways and techniques to um, use these tools, these plugins in Visual Studio to get your code up there and synchronize and, and do all this stuff, but I think at this point I found the easiest way to, to handle this. So first of all, just begin with the understanding that we have we're going to be creating repositories in our GitHub account. And a repository is just a folder that is going to exist both remotely and on your local computer. So it's going to be a folder on your computer that you're probably going to have uh, a lot of different programs in. Uh, for example, you can see here I have like a web development uh, repository where I have tons of code in it. and at the same time, you know, some people might want to have one repository per program. It, it doesn't really matter. You just need to understand that a repository is just a folder. You can put multiple programs in, you can put one program in. It's just a folder on your computer that you can synchronize with a folder here on the GitHub server. So, the first two things we want to do, um, aside from making sure you have a GitHub account, obviously, is creating the folder on your local and then creating the folder which is called the repository on the remote. So I'm gonna do the remote first because it's really easy. So you, the, the mistake I'm, I've always made in the past is I've created the repositories using software like Visual Studio or GitHub or Windows. It turns out it's much better to create the repository actually just on the website. It's really easy. You just click on the repositories tab and this is where it lists all of your repositories it's the same as this view here except instead of just showing the popular repositories this is all of your repositories so all you have to do is click this green new button and type in the name of your repository so I'm gonna call it um, I'll pretend that I'm starting from scratch I'll just say my stuff and it's public and none of this really matters to me I'm just gonna create it so at this point uh, I can go back to where I started from. It's not listed in my popular repositories just because I have too many. But if I click on repositories, there it is right there. So this, which as you can see is a simple URL, it's github.com slash my username slash the name of the repository. That is the URL that represents the remote folder that will contain all of my code. So that's the first step. So the remote repository is created and ready to be synchronized. Now we need a folder on our local that we want to uh, synchronize with it and be a mirror image of it so that we can always work with that folder on our local and continually push changes to the remote or potentially throw away our changes and get uh, the original code back from the remote. So now we go into, actually now you just choose a folder anywhere on your computer and I created one here in users Donald GitHub. It really doesn't matter. You can put this folder anywhere you want. I just put it in here because it looks like the other Windows libraries and I created a shortcut there. So um, that actually, if I click this right here, this is actual file location of the folder I chose. So for you it could be anything. It could be on your desktop, but for me it's users Donald GitHub. So that's going to be the folder that I put everything in. Um, so uh, I'm choosing to only have one folder locally. If I create multiple applications, they're all going to go in my GitHub directory. So I want to copy that, and now we start with the Visual Studio stuff. So first, first things first is you want to click on Team and manage connections. So the first thing I would do is click on the little plug where it says manage connections. Oh, actually click on the little home first. And then you'll see a settings button over here after you click on the, the home. And then there's going to be a global settings. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure your global settings are correct. Just put in your name, put in the email address that is associated with your GitHub account. And then for this folder here, you want you, this is your default repository location. So 
put the folder here where you want all your code to be on your computer. You just click update and then that's it. So at this point we're ready to go. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'll just leave that, actually I'm going to close this for a minute. So that's ready. I'm going to create a new project. So pretend, you know, we're creating a new lab for school and I'll call it anything. I'll call it test application. And this is the important part. Make sure that you're putting it inside of the folder that we have specified as the folder where we want to keep all of our local repository code. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So here's our code. I'm not going to really do anything to it because the purposes of, purpose of this is just to show how uh, GitHub works. Uh, I will open the Solution Explorer anyway, so this is what we're used to seeing. Just note that if, if we now go back to my folder, since I specified this as the location for where I wanted it, that's where my code is. So inside of my GitHub folder or you know wherever the folder you created is, that's where your code is. So now comes the, the magic and you really just have to highlight the Solution Explorer on the solution, right click and say add solution to source control. Uh, it might, since this is not the first time I've done this, it might say like, hey, do you want to use TFS or Git? Make sure you select Git and probably tell it, don't, don't ask me again. That's what I did. That's why it didn't ask me. So um, it's ready now. It's ready for me to basically synchronize my changes with the remote repository. So my, my code is already sitting there on my local. It's just ready to get sent up. So there's a certain process that you have to go through when you are ready to uh, push your changes to the remote. There's a, a, a commit, and what commit means is that you commit to the local repository. It's, it's basically saying, I'm done with the code, I want to keep this code, I'm going to uh, make this code permanent in my local repository, but I'm not yet ready to send it to the remote directory. And why would you do that? Well, a lot of times, um, when you're working with a lot of other people, you want to commit something so that other people have access to it, but you don't want to push it to a remote because that's taking it to the next level of visibility for an entire team to see it. So a commit is just a local commit, so it doesn't require a network connection or anything like that. You can call it anything you want. I'm going to say first commit. Uh, description doesn't matter. So it gives you uh, an idea of what files it's going to commit and I'm going to hit commit and that's done. It says the commit was created locally sync to share your changes with the server. That's pretty self-explanatory so all you have to do is click this little sync button and it is going to send everything that we did up to the repository. Now after I clicked that notice it wasn't happy. It says down here publish to remote repository there is no remote configured for this local repository. Establish the remote by publishing the URL of an existing empty repository. All that means is it wants to know where we're going, which is right there. That's my remote repository. So if I put the name of the remote repository right there, and then I click publish, then I'm done. And I shouldn't ever have to do that again. The first, since I did that once, it should now realize that those that the local repository and the remote repository are connected and I'll demonstrate that in a second. But just to show you that that worked, I can come back here and refresh my repository and look at that. There's my test application, there's my program, so all the files are up there. So now I could say something like um, eh, I want to delete the git attributes and git ignore files. So I could come back here into my folder, I could come into here, I could delete these two files. And remember, my local repository folder, which is the GitHub folder, it detects any changes made inside at all. So if I delete those two files, it's going to notice. So I'm going to delete the two files, go back into Visual Studio, and at this point if I say what are my changes, you can see it noticed that I destroyed those two files. And I can commit that. I can say I deleted two files. I can commit that locally, then I can sync it, 
and I'm done. Go back here, refresh. Hmm, too fat, too slow, too fast. I mean, oh right, I'm I'm glad I did that because the the what you have to do after you sync is you have to push. So this guy right here successfully push to origin master and now it should be updated. So three steps are commit, sync, and push. It gets more complicated when you're working with other people and you have to have uh, you have to be careful that you're not that you don't have conflicts on the same file, but for our purposes that, that should do the trick. So the same thing goes for kind of any changes here. Right now my local repository and the remote repository are mirror images, but if I change this, you see how all I did was I hit enter and all of a sudden there's a red check mark by program.cs. So I didn't even really do anything. I'll do something. I'll say system dot console dot oh no I'm not sure. System dot console dot right line hello world. So all I did was I added one line of code to program.cs. Now that's great. And over here, there's a red check mark, which means, well, I hovered over it, and it says, hey, there's a pending edit. So here's another way that you can um, use the, the Solution Explorer to do commits. So I can just right-click on that file, and I can say commit. Again, I can put a message in here. I can say, I added hello world, commit it sync it, push it, there it goes. So now if I go in there, look at my program, there's the whole little world. So um, that's how to get started. Now what if I want to, what if I decide that I made some changes and I want to go back to the original version that I had? So I'm going to go here, <clears throat> I'm going to say that I deleted it, and let's say I deleted a whole bunch of code, and I say, oh crap, I forgot, what, what, what do I do? So if I come over here, and I say, well, you know what, I want, I want this to go back to the, the way it was before. I don't want to push my changes to the remote. I want to get the remote version and bring it back. So that's called a pull. So I'm going to try that. Incoming commands, incoming commits pull. Actually, I think this is going to be a little different. Undo. Are you sure you want to undo your pending changes? These one items, yes. Okay. So it's a little different. Sometimes in um, different plugins for different applications, they'll use different terms to do things. But apparently in Visual Studio, you can just right click and say undo. So that's nice. And you can use these context menu commands at any level. Like if you want to commit everything that's changed, you do it way up here and you would say commit. And it'll commit everything in the solution. So let's see. We created a new repository. We synced up with it. We created a folder locally, pushed all of our changes up there. What else could we possibly want to do? Um, maybe if we accidentally delete our entire folder and see what happens if we do that. So I will exit Visual Studio and I'm going to say for some reason everything that I had in my beautiful folder is just gone. So let's see what happens now. Go back into Visual Studio And I'm going to go to Team Manage Connections. And I'm going to say, right, so in this case, this would be like um, you get to school and you sit down at the computer and your computer has nothing on it, and, or, you know, or any computer. So it, either scenario, this is, this kind of covers either scenario of you either deleted all your code or you're going to a computer that doesn't have any of your code. In this case, you simply want to clone your repository. So again, you just get the URL of the repository. In this case, it's 
right there. So just my account name slash my stuff. So that's my local repos or remote repository. So if you open up your Team Explorer and you go to Manage Connections, which is the little plug icon, and you hit Clone, you can specify the remote. So this is the guy I want to clone and the local. And this does not have to be the directory I created last time. You can keep creating as many local repositories as you want. So even though you have, uh, even though there is only one uh, my stuff remote repository, I can create as many different local uh, versions of it as I want. So just f for example, I can I'll put one on my desktop. So this time I'll choose my desktop, and I'm going to say clone that to my desktop. Um, let's see, it says, oh no, I have to create a new folder on my desktop. I'll call it test. There, that's better. So now, all I did was clone it, and if you minimize it, you'll see that I have a folder that has all of my code that it pulled down from the GitHub remote repository. And I've got all my code back magically. So now we know how to send our code up, pull it back down, make changes, undo changes. Uh, you really don't need to be able to do anything other than those few things that I just did to be able to uh, do the assignments in this class. The next level of this would be understanding how to create and work with multiple repositories, um, create multiple local repositories, and have different versions of your local repositories for the rem a single remote repository, and even possibly working with other people and resolving merge conflicts when two people are working on the same files in the same branch. But that's that's a whole science all to itself, um, software change management. So I really w just wanted to give you guys a working understanding of how you can create your repository. Uh, once again, just to break it down, create the remote repository through the GitHub website, create the local repository just by creating a folder, and you can sync those up just by right-clicking on your solution in the Solution Explorer and saying Add to Source Control. And once your repository with your code already exists, if you want to bring it down, you really just have to come here to the Team Explorer, click on the plug, and clone it, and make sure you put it in the right folder, which is or sorry, the right URL, which is just the URL of your repository. So you go to your repository, grab the URL, and in clone, that's the URL of the Git repo that you want to clone, and you can put it in any local folder you want. Just make sure you understand that as soon as you click clone, that local folder that you specified becomes connected to the remote, and anything that you uh, commit, sync, and push will end up on the server as well. So I think that's good to start off with. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to have questions. There might be differences in Visual Studio uh, 2013 also. But I'll start with this, and I'll, I'll get some feedback from you guys. And if I missed anything, then I'll either do this video over or just create a second one. All right, cool, thanks.